What is going on you guys, Bastion Wajo here and today we are going to be talking about how to counter the tier limit in Shizu deck in this tier 0 format. So uh, obviously for the past two YCSs, YCS Dortmund and YCS Pasadena, we have clearly seen that we are obviously in tier 0 format. Uh, I've already posted uh, videos as far as how to counter uh, cards that counter tier, uh, tier limit and now we're going to actually be talking about not necessarily the cards that counter but exactly what to look for when uh, facing up against this deck, especially in your local, regional, or YCS level. If you guys do like the more competitive analysis, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video, let's get right into the video. So guys, right here is not, is not anyone's specific deck list. I just this is a deck list I've been testing around with as far as the uh, the Shizu Tier Limit deck. Um, it is it is definitely a big a bit too big brain for myself, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, and stop. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick to sprite for now. But after playing it, I mean, essentially, you get to really understand the ins and outs. Uh, for this is a good I mean, it's a good advice for anyone who is looking to be uh, to get better at the game, to uh, uh, to be able to understand the game a little bit better, or maybe just brand new to the game as well. Uh, being able to understand how to play different types of decks, because that way you understand what your opponent is trying to do if they are playing said deck. Uh, and the better deck knowledge, the better uh, understanding you have your opponent has, the better outcome you may have of knowing when and what to hit at certain times. So, first things first, we're going to be talking about guys is, is actually what type of deck this is. This is a primarily first a fusion style deck. So how do they fusion? They don't use polymerization. Some use super polymerization, but it's kind of falling out of favor. So what do they use? They use three monsters when they're milled. Uh, it's going to be Hafnis, they, they have the Merly, or they have their Sheeran. Uh, uh, so these are the three hard ones per turn. They have Shaylin or Sheeran, uh, they have the Hopness, and they have the Merly. Uh, so these three cards are responsible for all the fusion summoning inside of the deck. Uh, so what does this mean, right? So these three, their fusion summon effects, uh, all their effects, I should say, are hard once per turns. Uh, so what is the deck essentially trying to do? Uh, they're trying to summon, first of all, the deck's trying to summon out at least two level fours to go ahead and summon out Abyss Dweller. Because uh, not only does that allow them to continue to go on about their plays uh, and prevent you from uh, from uh, using your graveyard, but what they'll do is they'll activate Abyss Dweller's effect first and then when they go ahead and mill Kelbeck or they're playing a Gito, uh, they go ahead and mill that. So that way they can freely go ahead and continue on with their plays without having to worry about your graveyard. So that is a strategy that they're that you should definitely go ahead and look out for. Uh, so Abyss Dweller is something that uh, I want to say most tier limit players I have seen try to make it as early as possible just so they can go ahead and make it about their plays. Uh, it's not a necessity, but it is really nice to have if you're able to do it. Uh, for the Ishizu tier limit cards, Kelbeck and Agito do share a similar effect when, when they're sent to the graveyard. Uh, they get to go ahead and mill the top five cards of both players' decks. This is not a quick effect, however, so this is sent is sent, this activates essentially the second they are sent to the graveyard. So that is something to keep in mind because Madura and Keldo are quick effects. So what they do, Madura and Keldo, what they do is when uh, if they're in the graveyard, you can activate them effects as a quick effect. So you can go ahead and chain into any one of these to target up to three uh, cards in either player's graveyard and shuffle them back into the deck. Which is really, really good. There's another additional effect where you have exchange of the spirit in the field or graveyard. You can target up to five or something like that. But realistically, that's that's almost never really seen. So we'll go ahead and leave that as is for right now. So so what have we learned so far is you have three fusions, two ways to mill five, and two ways to shuffle back. So what can we take away from that immediate picture is that no matter how many how many cards they mill, they're really not going to gain as much advantage as they want to if they're not able to fusion summoning. So uh, saving your Bistial and DD Crows, saving your Skull Meister, saving your Ghost Bells for those three fusion summon activations is something that's very, very key. Uh, Ghost Bell and Skull Meister might be a little bit tougher to activate just because they may be chain link one uh, in a series of a lot of chain links within the tier of Shizu deck. I mean, all these cards are sent to the graveyard do something or another. Uh, so that is something to definitely have to look out for so uh if you're able to go ahead and negate or find a way to alter or halt the effect of merly sheeran and hovness to prevent fusion summoning the most they can really put up is put up like a redoer uh or a baguska or an abyss dweller and they go ahead and prevent you that way that way they can go ahead and save themselves to go on to the next turn as well or they have a hoffness in hand because it is a hand trap essentially i uh, then go ahead and go that route that way they play during your turn as well so, Tiyama and Shizu has a two-phase process to what they're trying to do when they're trying to build their boards. 
their first turn, they set everything up, get a lot of cards in the graveyard, they make sure they have their Medora, the Kellos in the graveyard if possible, that we can go ahead and shuffle back if necessary, but they want to go ahead and play during your turn as well, and that's where they set up a lot more interruptions as well. Typically during their first turn, they may be going to set up a uh, uh, Rukalos, Abyss Dweller uh, with a Sprite Elf potentially pointing to him. Uh, going on their second turn, they're going to most likely go into a Kaleido Heart uh, or Dragos Tapelia to be able to go ahead and add additional interruptions onto their field. So that is something that to keep in mind, but if you're banishing them, uh, then obviously they cannot be shuffled back. I'm talking about the uh, tier limit card, so that is something that is really, really good. Although I will say that Crime, whenever it is into the graveyard by card effect, you can target one of your banished tier limit monsters and add it to your hand. So this does play around it, but like I said, Crime is a one-off, so it's really not something that I'm too worried about uh, as far as making sure that you know, you're playing around this. It's really more of a Saki card than anything, so that is, again, something to keep in mind. But as long as you're preventing those three cards from activating Hopness, the Sheeran and the Merle, you, sh you should be okay. Next thing I want to go ahead and talk about is the Tier Limit Trap cards. So the Celiac and the Crime. So these are extremely powerful and a lot of times in their first turn boards, the this is what Tier Limit is trying to go for. They're trying to set up a Rukalos or whatever other uh, Tier Limit Fusion on the field and they're going to have one of these two backing it up. And that way they can go ahead and make sure that they interrupt your not only your place, but then they can go ahead and send it to the graveyard and get additional effects that way as well. So both of these need a tier limit monster on board in order to activate. So this is huge if you're able to get rid of that tier limit monster before these effects become relevant. That is something that's going to be extremely, extremely important in this game. Uh, or in this match, I should say, whether it's the mirror match or you're just going up against it uh, out of the blue or at the local level or regional, whatever it might be. So Crime and Suliak do need a tier limit monster on board. And knowing that and seeing if they're searching into their hand or even if they're setting two, chances are it is going to be these two or perhaps a Heartbeats. Heartbeats, they do not need a tier limit monster on board they can go ahead and send a card from the hand to the graveyard it doesn't, it doesn't even need to be a tier limit card so this is really really powerful but most likely than not they are going to have these two sets uh, just because you are able to search traps and you're not able to search quick play spells within the tier limit archetype uh, so that is something definitely to keep in mind as well if you are able to get rid of the tier limit card whatever it might be before they're able to go ahead and activate this fantastic if you're able to go ahead and normal summon and punch over whatever they have you should be okay uh, if it doesn't have an effect if, i mean really if you're playing a normal monster deck <laughs> um, but there are plenty of other ways to go ahead and get around that as well so definitely something to keep in mind as well third thing is going to be a little more obvious but obviously uh, I, I, it is something i do want to go ahead and mention of course so with tier elements they obviously gain effects whenever they're sent to the graveyard whether it's fusion summoning sending special summoning themselves back searching uh whatever it might be sending more cards to the graveyard with this you cannot mess around as far as sending the to sending cards to the grave via card effects so a lightning storm raigeki dark hole are all not not the most effective cards against tier limits at all zeus is very very risky as well very very rarely does it actually pay off for you going up against this deck so if you are, are able to go ahead and find a way to destroy these cards specifically these cards by battle if you want to destroy the dragos to Palea, the sprite elf their baguska with a card effect perfectly fine but when it comes to tier limit cards I prefer to go ahead and find a way, if possible, to go ahead and beat over it with a monster. Just destroy it by battle, that way you get rid of the problem. That's where the Bestial cards really come into play because they are extremely, extremely strong. Not just in, yes, they have great effects, but they're all 2500 attack monsters. So they're going to beat over any tier limit monster your opponent might have. Unless it's a fusion monster, but there are ways to go ahead and uh, manipulate that as well. And lastly, guys, there are two things that I want to go ahead and talk about. Or a few things I want to say, I guess I'm not just limited to a few numbers. Uh, uh, but there are cards that in theory would be really good against this strategy, but they only work in niche scenarios. For example, uh, Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries, right? So this is a phenomenal card. I thought it was great. Just go ahead and banish their uh, their Kit Kalos, and that pretty much should hinder uh, Tier Limit from doing a, a lot during their turn. So this is, would be a strategy that I think might be able to be very helpful. But as I mentioned earlier, Tier Limit Crime, when it's into the graveyard, you are able to target one of your banished Tier Limits and shuffle it back. So that is something to take into consideration. Yes, you might get rid of it immediately, but the second that Crime hits the grave, they're going to get it right back and go on about their plays again. Uh, so that 
it isn't necessarily something that I think is the best counter for this. Uh, next one would be a card like Mystic Mind. Mystic Mind, I think, is a really good uh, counter for Sheila Don't get me wrong. It's a really good counter for a lot of decks. It's still a really good card. Uh, it hasn't lost any power. It hasn't been power crap per se. It's just that uh, this deck has cards like Tier Lament Heartbeat that can immediately pop a spell trap on the field and it also has the field spell which whenever a card is shuffled back you get to go ahead and pop any card on the field so it does have immediate outs to Mystic Mind and that's something that we want to go ahead and take into consideration don't get me wrong it's still very viable to be played and Necro Valley is still really good as well uh, but it's not going to be nearly as effective as other cards out there so that is something to also take into consideration other I want to say Okay, so go ahead and wrap this up, guys. It's, uh, we've already talked about a lot of the things that you wouldn't need to look out for. Timing, what to hit, when to hit it. Uh, if there is a Mudora or there is a Keldo in the graveyard uh, and your opponent knows you have a uh, graveyard removal, what they're going to most likely do is activate one by one as far as their Havnis, Sheeran, and their Murley. They're not going to activate them all in once uh, because essentially if... Uh, if uh, you are playing Mudora or the Keldos as well, which I've seen a lot of uh, decks, especially like the uh, Naturia was playing this as well, as far as getting them in the graveyard, then those can be used to counter you as well. Uh, so that's definitely something to take into consideration. They can chain their own Medora or Kelo Shuffle back, but they're not going to be able to get those effects. So there's a lot of factors that do play into that. So it is something that you do want to make sure you are keeping in mind. Uh, but to go ahead and put a quick little bow on this, guys, I want to go ahead and talk about some decks that are immediate counters for this deck. Uh, so Bistial Sprite is not in... Well, it's probably a bad place to start. But Bistial Sprite is a fantastic deck still. Uh, the fact that you are able to abuse the Bistial cards and beat over whatever uh, uh, monsters your opponent might have and still use them as uh, as link or exes material uh, depending on what you're trying to get out is still a very very powerful strategy uh, next on that list would be a deck like the Flandries archetype of course which uh, main decks D shifter uh, it doesn't worry about having cards in the graveyard it really just messes with your opponent wildly you can main deck three Necro Valley and three Mystic minus well with Metaverse like the guy who got second place at YCS Dortmund got had three Mystic Mind set rotation Metaverse uh, terraforming and the Necro Valley in his deck in addition to of course the magnificent map for full laundry so that is a phenomenal counter for this deck of course um, a Dolce, which again, you don't really have cards in the graveyard with a Dolce, so you are good to go as far as that goes. And then lastly, we have the Exo Sister strategy, which is a lesser counter for it because yes it, it does counter things in the graveyard but if you're going to be playing that type of a deck you might as well go fluandries it does so much more with so much less takes a lot le less effort to go ahead and make sure that you're able to be as optimal as possible with your cards so overall fluandries bestial sprite exo sister and madolce so far are going to be the best counters for this deck uh if you guys know any other ones don't say grave keepers <laughs> <laughs> uh, Grave Keepers is a cool strategy for GOAT, but it does not. Let's keep it out of this discussion, okay? Uh, unless unless I'm missing some sauce. If you guys know some sauce with the uh, Grave Keepers and Necro Valley, definitely let me know in the comment section down below, guys. But overall, I think this is going to be uh, essential, I want to say, as far as learning what to hit, when to hit it. If you guys want more in-depth analysis or uh, if there's something I may have missed, definitely please let me know in the comment section down below. I am want to make sure that... Uh, I'm as accurate as possible in making these videos so if there's anything that I missed or I want to make sure also that as a community we are all learning together so like I said uh, anything that I could improve on with this type of analysis or anything that you think uh, could also be used to counter the teal main shoes strategy definitely know in the comment section down below and go ahead and discuss it there uh, overall guys if you guys did enjoy go ahead and leave a like subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one